Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Virgo. If Virgo is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. Okay, let's get started. And so tonight our card is the Two of Cups, which has everything to do with love. Okay, and let's see what these tea leaves have to say tonight. Okay, and so if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. Okay, so first thing I saw was that we have the the American bison here, um, also known as the buffalo, uh, and you can see right here, um, this is the bison, the head would be here, and here are the legs, okay, and so um, one of my most favorite <laughs> animals, it is my, um, my own totem animal, um, given to me by my father, revealed to me by my father uh, when I was young. And um, and so anyways, uh, this is a um, this is a symbol of endurance. This is a symbol of um, thoughtfulness, of taking time to make a decision. Um, there is a power uh, within these beings, and that is that, um, when an animal or anything is so big, it takes a lot of calories, um, to sustain it. And so intuitively or naturally, um, large animals are pretty thoughtful about their movements. They don't really go wandering just for the heck of it. Um, so when I see the, the bison, I think, okay, so this is somebody who really plans their moves. They are not um, you know, just kind of moving on a whim very often. And, um, and then we have also a very kind of chill animal, very just kind of hanging out. Um, and yes, uh, kind of rationing their energies. Now, if something comes along and challenges the bison or puts their, I don't know what it's called, their, their grouping, their family, their tribe into danger, uh, they will absolutely charge, right? And they will stampede, um, trample, and, um, and, and, and fight, right? So um, I feel that you're very family oriented. Now, if it's your family of origin or not, that doesn't matter. I, it is your chosen family. It is, um, your friends group, the people in your life who are close and who you care about, um, you would do almost anything for them. Okay. Um, and so this is a beautiful, beautiful, um, symbol to start with. I think that there is a sense of great power here. And with the two of cups, it makes sense. Um, there is that enduring and, um, very, now I don't, I don't necessarily say unconditional love, but there is a love that is minimally conditioned, conditioned in all the right ways, right? In the ways that matter, the, in the boundaries and, um, in the respect and treating each other well. Okay. Um, now I wanted to turn it this way. We have, uh, we have Oz up here, O and a Z, okay, O Z, and um, and that's interesting because it it is kind of like the Wizard of Oz, um, and it does kind of have um, 
when I see the word Oz, and, and it does come up once in a while, it does seem like uh, there is a sense of going into another place. Like you have been going along with your life, pretty ordinary things, and suddenly something happens and you kind of are, um, well, transported, right, into this um, kind of bizarro world. And so I think that this is a time where there are a lot of emotions. Now we're on the, the incline of the bowl. So that tells me this is the emotional area. Um, it tells me that there, there's been some... Um, very prominent emotions, okay? And um, and I think this has taken you into a place where um, you're kind of looking at things differently. Things don't necessarily seem the same as they did, um, only, you know, just a, a f maybe a few days ago, a few weeks ago. Suddenly, there is some kind of, um, you know, some kind of illumination into your life that has kind of sent you into um, really experiencing things a little bit differently. Now, some kind of secret revealed or um, you have crossed paths with something that um, has made you feel greatly, um, maybe some kind of new concept or, um, you know, I, you, you had some kind of religious experience or spiritual experience. Um, you've met somebody who... Um, speaks to you in a way that, uh, you know, kind of takes you into um, a real kind of spiritual and emotional place. Um, you know, uh, it could be so many different things, but I do, I feel like the door, f like, flinging wide open, and here you are in this technicolor <laughs> you know universe all of a sudden um and and I feel like it it um it can be kind of startling jolting right um but I do I think that you welcome this experience I think um you know we can um and especially as Virgos and I am a Virgo myself um, solar Virgo, uh, we can go about our lives in a way that's really kind of regimented and, and, um, you know, we like routines and, and living way and living in patterns and setting up the systems of our life and getting them, you know, um, well, you know, put together well and well oiled and running smoothly and um and and the, that work is fulfilling in a lot of ways it is very fulfilling but it can get to a point where it feels um kind of a little bit um gray or neutral right and it's just kind of um there's not a lot of pizzazz all the time um, but I do think that once in a while we get into these places where it's like, aha, you know, um, I am suddenly struck by the beauty of the universe, by, uh, the, um, you know, the, the gorgeousness of the great unknown, the absolute, um, well, it is it is it is akin to the ecstasy of agape, of divine love, of um, Titi. No, come on, girl. I love you. You're not knocking my stuff off, though. Go on, go find daddy. There you go. Go find poppy. Um, and akin to the ecstasy of agape, right? And what does that mean? Um, when we fall in love with the divine, when the, the when there is that, um, that union with uh, deity, with God, goddess, um, nature, um, you know, the cosmos, and, um, and, 
and unlike any kind of uh, relationship we could have with another person, and maybe only the, the only person we could really have this relationship with is maybe ourselves, maybe our our children in some way. Um, but there is a um, just it's a limitless kind of of connection. I mean, you, you, all you have to do is read the writings of the saints, any of the saints, really. Um, but it, especially, and I bring her up pretty often in my readings, but Teresa of Avila, um, you know, this is, uh, um, this is a, a saint that even in, um, in depiction is in, you know, the throes of, uh, an ecstasy of, of divine union with, um, you know, with her, uh, celestial spouse and, um, and, and to be able to experience this kind of, um, openness with, uh, you know, an unnameable thing, a, a um, ineffable thing, a, uh, you know, maybe even what we would call a mystery God, maybe possibly, right? Um, but, but then, you know, it's all, it is all particular to experience. It's not a mystery to everyone. You know, some people do, they have very, um, real and, and, um, and, uh, visual and, um, immersive experiences with their deities. So, um, you know, I, d I just, I feel like there is a, um, a, a beautiful time here. Um, a, a closeness that, um, maybe feels like it has been lacking a little bit. You know, you just, I go through periods of time. I think we all do. Any kind of spiritual person, religious person, um, we do. There are times when it feels like our life is kind of absent of um, direct uh, experience with spirit, with divine, with magic, with, um, you know, feeling like we're interconnected with the cosmos and, and um, things just kind of feel... Um, almost kind of melancholy and depressive and, and so on. Um, but, you know, that is not to say that there is true, there is an absence because, you know, there really, um, it, there is a waxing and waning. Well, I feel that you are coming out of that, that period of time. It is, and I see, I keep looking at this as well as a hermit here, okay, with a staff. And, um, and I, and I do feel like there is this, this sense of, um, intentionally going into these interior places, um, kind of losing yourself in it a little bit, you know, and, and so maybe this is a time of great meditation of, of, um, of, uh, almost obsessive love, you know, of creativity. Uh, your stomach is really, gr what is going on? Did you just get full? Of, she got full of water. And now she's just she's got all kinds of tummy rummins going. You do. You just love to come over here and fart and burp. It's <laughs> you get all comfortable on mom and <laughs> All right. So anyways, um, so I do, I just, and I'm seeing spirals and, and I can just imagine, you know, there is this, there is the, and it is, it's a power sign for us, this hermit and, um, go being in your natural state you know, um, following your true will, really listening to, um, you know, where, what, what it is that is going to, um, continue to open, open you up, open your heart. Um, and I, and I keep imagining kind of going to the water, maybe walking around the lake or, um, a pond or the ocean or something like this. Um, but really being drawn to, um, 
and the wind, being out in the wind for some reason, uh, the water and the wind. I'm not thinking so much of the tropical, but it could be that. Um, but I, I imagine kind of the cold water, um, and, and, you know, being out there and just being absolutely, um, kind of encapsulated by the elements and, um, and just kind of enveloped in this majesty of, of the divine, right? Where you just, there's no way around feeling like you are in a place that, um, is full of, uh, full of grace, full of, um, of spirit, uh, you know, in, in considering really what, what factors, infinite almost factors it took to align to for you to be here in this spot in this time um doing this thing and um and for it to be so perfect be no don't hiss me for it to be so perfect um because it is you are perfect the world is perfect um everything is as it should be in this moment uh, it may not feel like it always, you know, and it actually might be quite devastating. It might be very lonely. It might, you might carry pain with you, fear, um, you know, uh, lack of resources and um, a lot of struggle, you know, and it's hard to understand how could this be right. Um, but you know, and I don't have answers for that really, but I do know, um, from my own experience, deep struggle, I do know loss and violence and, and abuse and all these kinds of things. And I can tell you, and maybe it's because I'm just a silly optimist, but, um, you know, we get to where we're supposed to be. We will. Um, you know, and you have to find those moments for yourself where you can get into that kind of odd space, right? Where you can, um, find yourself into a place that feels magical to you, um, where you can find outlets for, um, you know, your, your need to connect with the universe. If it is, if you are somebody who likes to be out in nature, or maybe you're somebody who likes to be, um, you know, online, this is, people don't talk about a lot, how magical the internet really can be in different places. Um, you know, especially if you find collectives of, uh, intelligences, I don't know if they're humans. I mean, they could be, uh, you know, you, who knows what we communicate with online. Um, but there are places, you, chat rooms and, and, um, and forums and even the communities that exist here on YouTube. Um, you know, I'm always, uh, um, I always bring up Reddit, although, you know, I have no affiliation with them. Um, I like Reddit because you do have the capability of being as anonymous as you want to be on there. And, um, and so, you know, even if you are somebody who is like perpetually online, you don't like going outside necessarily. Um, that's okay. You, ha there are, there are magical places wherever you look and it's just, it is, it is about having eyes to see, making something of where you are, right? Where you are, where you are going. And this is, this is a time where I think that you are really in that experience so deeply. Okay, let's take a look over here. Now, <laughs> now we have this face um, and it looks like somebody who just kind of has a bit of a stone face there. Um, not happy, not sad, um, but I just feel like, I almost feel like there is a situation with somebody that you love where um, they kind of almost... You love them, they love you, but if you are not existing in the way that, um, 
they kind of approve of or they kind of envision for you, um, it's kind of the cold shoulder. Uh, they don't communicate with you as much. It's kind of like they get very standoffish. And um, that can really hurt your feelings, especially because, you know, Virgos, we like to, we get excited about things that we care about, like anybody else. But I think um, there's a sense of, like, we really want to share uh, the goodness of what we've found. Like, if you found, like, a new band you really like, you really want to share that with somebody, you know, um, or whatever it is, a new recipe or or something, um, some beautiful thing that you have discovered or, you know, whatever it is that you're into. Um, but, you know, then you have these people in your life who are not, they just don't respond well to anything outside of their kind of, um, their own life experience. And this can be painful for a Virgo um, because really ultimately we usually, um, you know, we just, I think people think that we'd want to control them. We want them, we want to decide what they should like. Um, and I think often it's just that we're so passionate about the things that we care about. It comes off as like, you know, like we're, we're very like snobby about things or, um, we, you know, we absolutely won't stop. We're like the person that's like, Oh, watch this video on my phone. And then we stand there and hold it and watch their face as they watch every second of the video to make sure that they're paying attention. But it's not like that. <laughs> I don't feel like we're like that Virgos. Um, we're just perceived to be like that. And so, um, you know, I think that this is, this is hard when you experience this with somebody that, especially with somebody that you care about profoundly and they just are not interested in whatever you're into. Um, and, and it, I think it can be, it can be low key, a little heartbreaking, I think. Um, but I do, you know, I just, I want the, to be the friendly reminder that that is not about you. It's about them. <laughs> it's about them. And it might just be their disposition. Maybe there's somebody that's pretty closed off, you know, and, um, and yeah, maybe this, the, it's a good opportunity to, um, share your joys, share your, um, you know, whatever it is that you are ex excited about, go out there and share it with some other people, you know, reach out to some family members or friends or even, you know, somebody you haven't talked to in a while, um, and share your news, share, share whatever it is that, you know, you, um, that you're, you're really stoked about, um, because somebody, somebody's going to be excited for you. Somebody's going to want to hear what you have to say and, don't bite me, please. My goodness, you have really, you're just on one tonight, miss. Whew. She's scratching me out, this cat. She doesn't scratch anybody but me. She always just, it's, she, you know, she just, I don't, I can't think of what sign she is at the moment. <laughs> but my goodness, she's very forceful, little TT. I love her so much, but my goodness, I don't like being scratched. I don't like it. I don't like it. All right. So let's go ahead and check out our cards. We're using the Dreamers deck, 40 affirmations for, for pursuing your dreams from the I Know collection. Okay. And we're going to flip through real quick and stop where it feels right. And it says, I know that nothing bad lasts forever, even when my emotions tell me otherwise. I am never stuck. I am never stuck. And I don't know, is it a Virgo thing? Or maybe it's just a me thing, but I do. So my emotions will tell me like, ah, you've made a big decision or you're in this situation and, um, you're, it's going to be forever. You're just absolutely, ah, uh, you know, panic, panic, panic. And, um, and I do, I have to remind myself this too shall pass. It's okay. Especially when I have to talk in front of people. Um, you know, I've, 
I have shared on here before that I'm in recovery and I do um, 12 step uh, meetings and stuff. So, it, you know, if you know anything about that, it's like AA where um, you don't have to share, but, um, you know, depending on the meeting, uh, you might kind of be uh, high. They might look at you and think, okay, well, now it's your turn. You've been coming for <laughs> the last five years. You have to talk finally. Um, and yeah, that's my, those are my moments where I have to like really tell myself it's going to be okay. <laughs> this will, this will pass. It'll be real quick. And <laughs> nobody will remember if you said something weird. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's not a Virgo. Maybe it's just the anxiety ridden Lenore thing. So anyways, this too shall pass. We're not stuck, Virgo. We are not stuck. All right, here comes T again. You gonna bully me? No, you're gonna love me. I love you. I love you. We gotta clean up your face a little bit there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you I love you because I do, Virgo, and I thank you so much for spending this time with me. It is always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. And if you would be so kind as to like the video, it really does help the channel so much. It is free to subscribe. Or no, that was the wrong. Yeah. No, if you haven't subscribed yet, please think about subscribing. It is free to subscribe and um, if you would like to leave a comment, please do. I read them all and they mean the world to me. Right, TTs? Mm -hmm. And I would also like to mention a big congratulations to my husband, Paul, over at Dove and Serpent Tarot. Uh, he, I imagine by the time this video comes out, this reading comes out, he will have hit 200 K subscribers. That is 200,000 subscribers. Um, so I just want to, um, well, I just want to tell him I'm amazed. I, uh, absolutely, um, I abs, I always, I'm like, I have all these words. Um, He's just, I mean, he's something to behold. If you have watched his readings, you know. Um, he is something very special. He uh, is somebody who is so in tune with spirit. Um, you know, you can imagine he's like that in his readings. He's like that in our personal lives. Um, I feel uh, incredibly blessed to even know him. I mean, I just, I, you know, sometimes I'm just, I can't even fathom the fact that, um, I'm so lucky to get to spend my life with him and have a family with him. And he's such an amazing dad. And, um, and you know, I just, I, every time he reaches some kind of goal in his life, um, in our lives, I am just ecstatic and, you know, and all the times in between as well. But um, it's maybe one of the first times in my life, aside from my daughter, of course, that, um, you know, I just want to celebrate every, everything <laughs> that comes into, um, into his life that is good and everything he achieves. And, you know, um, so anyways, uh, I'm just, <laughs> I love you, babe. And, um, I don't know if you'll even listen to this, but, um, yeah, I'm putting out the energy anyways. And so, um, for the rest of you go check him out. Uh, if you haven't seen his channel yet, he's the best, I'm not biased. Yes, he's the best. <laughs> um, and so I love you all as well. And, uh, I thank you again for spending this time with me. Take care of yourself. We'll talk in just a few days. Good night. Good night. Good night.